welcome to Wake Up Missoula from my home. Um, of course, this is going to continue on well into the summer, not particularly because of the COVID crisis, but mostly to do with the fact that MCAT will be moving out at the end of this month. May 31st is our last day, but we plan on being out by that Friday before on the 29th. Um, so one of the things that MCAT is hopefully going to try to do is move into the new library as soon as they start allowing people to move in. So that's kind of what's happening in that in particular. One of the big things that are ha also happening is that Governor Steve Bullock just announced a phase two reopening starting June 1st. And what does that mean for graduation? Well, graduation is on and they plan on doing it outside at the Grizzly Washington Grizzly Stadium here in Missoula, Montana, regular scheduled times. So I got to check out the release of their uh, um, of all their graduations for MCPS Missoula. And on Friday, June 5th, uh, Washington Grizzly Stadium, Hellgate's going to kick it off at 9 a.m. Sentinel High School will be at 12. Big Sky will be at 3 p.m. Of course, Sealy Swan will have the graduation up in Sealy Lake. Um, uh, and that's going to be Saturday, May 31st um, at 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, Willard will get a graduation at Washington Grizzly Stadium separately on Thursday, which is uh, June 4th at 4 p.m. Okay, so here's the rub. So as uh, MCPS is gearing up for um, participants, they are uh, requesting that each graduate uh, uh, bring two. Uh, they cap it at two people. Of course, you can um, inquire any more information about uh, graduation and more by calling them at 728-2400. Again, that's uh, 728-2400, and you can get forwarded to the extension line to talk to the office and talk to some of the people. You can also go to mcpsmt.org for more information about graduation, about what are the policies for this overall graduation. But like any other graduation that's ever happened anywhere outside, expect wind. And uh, speaking of the weather, um, Missoula has had a flood warning. Uh, the river, Clark Fork River, has uh, basically gone up to almost 10 feet uh, to a certain median point. Let me check my notes real quick. And uh, flooding and not the amount of tourists coming to Montana because of, uh, to get away from COVID. But earlier this week, uh, the latest forecast for the National Weather Service office in Missoula is calling for the river to, uh, cr uh, river to crest began midnight at uh, midnight uh, Thursday night and it will continue until noon on Friday um, and it, it is just under the 11 foot uh, moderate flood stage so it has to be 11 foot to be considered a moderate flood um, but of course it, right now it's at a minor flood stage so there's that flood warning going on in there and some people have already uh, noticed that the river is already extremely high and a lot of the encampments, the Pavarela Center and other uh, uh, Connect Missoula sources have been in, in contact with some of those encampments and some of those folks to warn them about uh, the, uh, the endangering area as the floodwaters start to get higher and higher for the spring runoff. This rain that's been happening pretty much all week long. So uh, that's one of the things that they want to... Uh, help in terms of this. So if you're concerned and if you live near the Clark Fork River, you can go to smart911.com for more information about this. All right, let's move on to, uh, of course, as Montana moves into phase two, other states are easing up on restrictions to businesses while adhering to social distancing. Part of this includes stores that require face masks before entering while workers have to wear masks. Many store policies are doing a do not enter unless you have a mask. Some places are providing masks on their own, but many places uh, such as uh, chain stores like a Costco are uh, preventing anybody from even entering their store without wearing a mask. So a lot of times it's been on a lot of the policies of the businesses uh, trying to adhere towards social distancing and trying to keep their places safe and healthy for people to come in and shop. So uh, restrictions are starting to lift um, in many places, even New York, upstate New York especially, are starting to see some openings as well with some restaurants and stuff. Um, one of the things is that the U.S. continues to lead the world in the number of COVID-19 cases and deaths. According to the data compiled by the John Hopkins University, five states, New York, New Jersey, Illinois, Massachusetts, and California, have each reported more coronavirus cases than Hubei province, China, the original epicenter of the outbreak. So those are some of the news rundowns that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Um, let's see, what else do we... Okay, so back to Montana. So uh, I kind of skipped over this a little bit more. Phase two, you can go on to the, uh, the uh, I think there's a COVID-19 website for the state of Montana, which tells you exactly how the phases are working out. And part of this is that um, um, restaurants and bars and stuff like that, 
can reopen starting June first, but they have to. Uh, but they would be they would be running at seventy five percent capacity, and no social gatherings of more than fifty people. So if you are planning like a huge concert and a huge gathering, that's still a no go for a lot of places here as well. And uh, out of state, one of the biggest things that uh, is very interesting is that starting June first is that. They will no longer require people to two-week quarantine if they're traveling from out of state. So those are some of the things that are running down as well. Phase three, um, on the other hand, is one of the things where uh, they, they don't know exactly what's going to happen with this. Um, many uh, health officials are concerned about this as well. Uh, so just kind of keep your eye on it. Everything's being taken week by week. So that's kind of what's happening here and there. Uh, again, if you want to learn more information, you go NPR, many different news sources. Always get a second a look at some of your news as well. Um, but uh, for the most part, MCAT, I just wanted to... Okay, so here's the sales pitch. Okay, so MCAT is going to be uh, streaming a lot of these graduations. So you, many, of you, many of you might be concerned with the fact that you won't be able to attend graduation. Some grandparents, they suggest that they still remain social distance away. So people who are senior... Uh, 60 and over and have some pre-existing uh, health conditions. Uh, so live stream, um, all you got to do is subscribe to Missoula's Community Re Media Resource on our Facebook page. You get notified as soon as we go live. You can also uh, uh, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. But of course, if you don't want to do any of that, you can go to uh, MCAT.org and find our local live link, which will provide uh, a live stream from our uh, sources, which will be live streaming the Sealy. Uh, we'll be live streaming the Willard, and we'll also be live streaming the big event uh, for the high schools. Not saying that the high schools are not the big event, uh, but it's the longer day happening on Saturday, June. Oh no, Friday, June fifth, uh, for uh, Big Sky, uh, Hellgate, and uh, Sentinel. So, just to, just to rehash once again, uh, the graduation, uh, the first graduation is Sealy Swan in Sealy Swan, May thirty first at one p.m. in the afternoon. Um, Willard will be graduating at Washington Grizzly Stadium Thursday, June 4th, and on Friday, June 5th, Hellgate will kick it off at 9 a.m., Senna will be at 12 p.m., Big Scat at 3 p.m., and if I missed it, once again, Willard will be at 4 p.m. in the afternoon on Thursday, June 4th. So, those are just some of the uh, events that MCAT will be covering as well, so if you guys can attend, be sure to like us and subscribe to us and all that stuff on Facebook, YouTube, social media, and you get notified when we go live. Alright, so that's, that's the big sales pitch. But now here's a, another uh, uh, round of uh, new programs going to be an airing on MCAT. And then when I come back, I'm going to talk about some movies that are going to be streaming and shows as well. Number one um, struggle for farmers across the nation is access to land. And so our Land Lake program offers landowners who are interested in farmers getting on their land to fill out a listing um, about their land and what they're looking what kind of farmer they're looking to have on their land, if they're looking to sell it to a farmer or lease it to a farmer. Um, and then we have, the, we call them land seekers, the beginning farmers who are um, wanting to get on land. They can go on there and also put up a listing. It's like a matchmaking service of trying to um, find landowners and land seekers that um, can find, hopefully, get together and work out a lease or work out a buy option. Um, and get beginning farmers on land. Um, um, one of the things that you're not supposed to do is take pictures of things that look to you really bad, I guess, of people looking in desperation. But if you can see this, this is pretty much typically what it looked like. And you think, how did they do that? I mean, how do they live like that? And I mean, it's, it's a pretty modern city, so it's, it's really interesting. Um, estimated that 50% of Roma parents don't send their children to school. 20, 20 to, about 20% due to lack of personal documents. So they're, you know, they're traveling. They're travelers. They don't, they don't really live anywhere. They just, they just residing. So, so we're teleconferenced, and we work with the idea of what is Indigenous worldview and how we should shape it. And there are instructors on all sites and we start the course for seven, six or seven weeks where our different instructors present some aspect of their own research and knowledge around indigenous um, studies. And it's a standard 
in that class, we have a literal template that students are to declare their positionality in their final papers. And so all of us as scholars present ourselves in the middle of what we're presenting. Now think for yourself, you know me, but others don't. If, I, if you didn't know that about me, how differently would you look at what I said afterward? Let me talk about our, our claims process. So if you're uh, an employee and you uh, travel for county business, you fill out your claim form and your department turns in the claim form to our finance office with all of the documentation that's supposed to be there. Documentation is very important to me. If uh, it's not documented, then it did not happen. People always email and say, hey, let me, just, let me explain to you what happened. I'm not interested in your explanation. I'm interested in the documentation of your explanation. Sorry for the moment. Anyway. Um, uh, so then once it gets to finance, they, they create a uh, purchase order system and it comes through the auditor's office. So we, we check each claim, uh, well we check both claims, but certainly each uh, reimbursement, each credit card uh, claim. We, we make sure that all the charges are legitimate, that they all match the vendor, uh, that the, the amounts are correct, the correct per diem, rates, uh, per diem rates were used. We make sure that this travel works for county business. We don't like paying for uh, employees' vacations. Uh, that's not generally a good thing. And so uh, we take a lot of time doing this. After we're, we're finished, we okay it, and it goes up to the county commissioners who do a final okay, because they have budget authority, send it back down to us, and we'll cut a check or an ACH. This is not the most efficient process, but uh, it, it's important because it's public money. Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for a little thing called pre-critic. So pre-critic is where I prejudge a show whether I've seen it or not, and I try to base the synopsis and what I've seen part of the trailers and pictures and be like, okay, this is exactly what you can expect from this show. War is hell, and making a show about it isn't original. Uh, but let's watch another show about trauma and having breakthroughs in this episodic kind of way. Um, Hey, the best uh, representation of therapy from what I've seen in television shows is Monk. Because uh, throughout the whole entire series, he's seen the therapist. And he's not making any kind of big breakthroughs. He's, he's just seen him. It's a way for, to engage and talk about any of your traumas and past uh, things and stuff like that. But let's not talk about Monk. We're talking about uh, Homecoming, which is uh, about a veteran who comes home from war and has to deal with some traumatic things as well. And... Uh, there, there are some major things about this as well that um, if you have any problems, veterans, there's a lot of veterans uh, associations that help with a lot of this stuff. But with these shows, they're kind of unrealistic. They, they're, they're realistic in certain depictions, but the whole idea is that this is technically art and they are profiting off of this kind of stuff. So think about that when you watch these kind of shows. Moving on, the big flower fight. Speaking of profiting, um, if you like flower arrangements and uh, you like the... Uh, the Great British Bake Off, um, you're going to enjoy this, I suppose. And so this show is basically a reality show where people are just like making arrangements out of flowers and plants and stuff like that and competing with one another and just, yeah, if you like flowers, it's a great source for you. But I expect to basically kind of be like, okay, one hour, and people's like, I gotta hurry, I gotta hurry, I gotta, I gotta put the thing in the thing, otherwise it's not going to look right. Oh, no, the colors are off. And, it's like, and then the judge is like, hmm... The colors are off. It's like, oh, why did I say that? Because now they know the colors are off. So that's kind of how the reality shows work, where they film basically a whole reality show with, in a week, and then they have enough episodes that'll last 12 seasons. All right, moving on. Oh, yes, a uh, new show that just dropped on the CW, which will uh, be another superhero show, which basically starts out as... Um, <laughs> the whole premise of the show is, you lied to me. I'm sorry. But if you don't forgive me, the bad guy's going to win. Okay, I guess I forgive you. Beat the bad guy. That's basically what all superhero uh, CW shows are all about. And this one seems no different. It's called Star Girl. Star Girl. Sorry about that. I'm slurring my words because I'm talking too fast, so I'm going to slow down a little bit. Star Girl is about a girl um, who uh, gets moved and uprooted to Nebraska from California, and she finds a magical rod that gives her powers. And she has a stepdad that she doesn't get along with, but then they get along because they have a, 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 
a mutual goal to defeat the bad guy. So there's going to be a lot of uh, growing pains. And also Luke Wilson's in it, and I like Luke Wilson. And Amy Smart's in it. Remember Amy Smart? She was in, she was in movies and stuff. I think they, just, they definitely deserve better than this. All right. So anyways, um, as you guys, as we move on to the next topic, it's time for a little bit of dub and stuff. Um, I don't say, would, would you say this, it, you deserve better than this? I can't say. So without further ado, here's dub and stuff. A nice, lighthearted uh, movie, some Svenga, uh, let me, <laughs> from 1931, a uh, uh, movie, Svengalo. With uh, starring John Barrymore. So, without further ado, here's this movie. And when I can t come back, I'm going to be talking about some City Council. It's going to be. There you are, kitty cat. Kitty, kitty, kitty cat. Kitty cat. Oh, kitty no, no. Cat. Uh, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy. Why did I tell you my you, name? You have to come out with me, please. What? Like outside and whatever? Uh, this one really pretty girl and her sister. I'm assuming uh, you get the pretty girl? And I get the sister. Well, the pretty girl won't say well, she won't go out with me unless we both go together. Hmm. Hmm. I'll do it. Oh, thanks, Jimmy. I really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Well, maybe if I get the pretty girl and you get the sister, I will agree to that. <laughs> On second thought, no. I can't. Oh. Um. Hmm. <gasps> what if I buy the drinks? You won't have to pay for anything. Hmm. Can we order dessert? Uh, just the New York cheesecake. Hmm. Hmm. I don't want him to think that I'm hoity-toity or anything. Agree to disagree. Oh, well, if dinner goes well, maybe we can go ice cream afterwards. <sighs> well, mm, I suppose. Let me just take this eyeliner off my eyes. I did just go to a Green Day concert after all. One could not have too much guy liner after all. Oh, boy, this is great. Uh, okay, so you're going to get all dressed up. Uh, make sure you put on a uh, nice coat. <sighs> Clean yourself up just a little bit. Do not fear. The girl that's meant for us will choose us in the end. Uh, w what do you mean by that? I don't understand what you're talking about. Oh, that's quite simple, Hank. You be nice to a girl, and then you make her make all the decisions for you. And you don't have to do anything. You just expect it. You expect good things to happen to you if you're nice to women. So just be a nice guy. You can do that, can't you? <laughs> Very good. Come on, let's go. Oh, I think you're going to need another coat, because back here in the 30s, there's no such thing as global warming, so therefore it's a lot colder. Maybe now we can change the future. All right, let's not get carried away. We'll let the next generation handle it. We have more things to worry about back here, back in this era. Like what? Like, you know, disease and stuff. Listen, we can't change the world, but we can change tonight. For we will go out, and we will have... Uh, oh! Hmm, <coughs> what? What are we going to have? You will see. Come on, you can tell me. It's a surprise. Come on. Welcome back. Let's talk about some city council. One of the biggest things about city council is that they're working with the uh, the county on creating an, a climate ready Missoula. For the last week I talked a little bit more about this but this was a way for them to get public comments. One of the big things that the city council is trying to do is they're trying to open public comment up for more than a week so if they have a public hearing they talk about it and then they say we're gonna leave this open for a week you can email the city of Missoula you can call us all that stuff it is a great resource for them to engage with the community without well adhering to more social distancing but other than that, they're talking now about replacing LED lights. Uh, well, I mean, replacing street lights with LED lights. And part of this is going on with a lot of the bigger communities in Montana. And it is a way for uh, uh, this, uh, the city to upgrade and improve uh, the lighting and reduce energy costs uh, with it as well. Uh, Heidi West is concerned that this would affect other communities that can't afford replacing LED light bulbs. As we're transitioning to LED, um, there are communities that are going to be lagging behind. And when those rates are reassessed, folks that have not been upgraded to LED um, fixtures will see an increased 
rate without uh, increased efficiency. And I think that there is severe equity issues um, when we're looking at this on a statewide basis where communities like Bozeman, Billings, and uh, Missoula will see financial savings while there'll be additional costs for smaller communities that are maybe less likely to be able to weather those um, increases. So thank you. Part of good in energy savings could have a larger impact in, in the cost of electricity down the line. Uh, many spec, uh, skeptics of Northwest Energy are, saying, are noticing that uh, with the replacement of the LED lights that they recoup their costs within two to three years, but the costs for uh, lighting, the downtown lighting district, are just going to keep going up for in terms of energy costs. So the savings may not match up. So there's a lot of thing going here that there's a lot of back and forth with that. Uh, Jordan Hess is in favor of this motion uh, because it, um, in his, because this is what he had to say with the overall savings. I think that um, this is an imperfect deal, um, but I do think it is a better deal than we have now. Um, I think Heidi raises excellent points um, and uh, those points are uh, well taken. Um, I'm going to support the item because I think that um, the energy savings that come along with this conversion project um, are a net, uh, a net win overall, um, but um, it's not without sharing some of her reservations. So thank you for bringing those to, to light, Heidi. Of course, I did the math last week and I talked a little bit more about it during the committee meetings. Um, I didn't have any clips to show you guys. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to get uh, footage for that as well. Uh, of course, with Missoula, they would save $79,000 per year in electricity costs um, with the lighting downtown, which cuts the use of power by 50% for, for uh, street lighting in the downtown area. There's about 1,800 plus lights in the downtown um, street light uh, district. Um, so without further ado, the uh, city approved it with nine yeas and three nays with a continued uh, um, going against uh, Heidi, I mean Heidi going against this policy uh, from Ward 1. Um, so this is the, the city of Missoula went to a memorandum of understanding with Northwestern Energy uh, for replacing straight with lights with LEDs with uh, paint with special improvement lighting district. So people who live in the areas where they have the street lights and stuff like that, they're part of the special improvement lighting district and they will be paying for it. Um, not fully, but they're gonna be working on this as well as the uh, uh, Northwest Senators goes to the PSC, Public Service Commission, to uh, get the money and uh, certain rates to be able to pay for it as well. And you can look at more information uh, at this meeting as well by going on to the city's website, ci.missoula.mt.us, to find more information about this. But last week, um, we're, uh, speaking of energy savings, one of the biggest things is that uh, not necessarily uh, replacing lights, but reducing costs just in general. And part of this is to figure out uh, uh, exactly how Missoula is going to plan to grow and in a way to grow more green rather than just grow more buildings that will consume more energy. So part of this is Climate Ready Missoula, which is a part of the Climate Smart action t um, squad um, for the city of Missoula. So Climate Smart Missoula is a uh, nonprofit in Missoula that is very a uh, proponent in this climate ready Missoula that the city and county did a joint meeting on during the city council meeting to talk a little bit about. Brian von Lossberg praises the partnership between the city and county and this is what he had to say. Um, I want to highlight and thank, um, acknowledge that this is a, a proud partnership between the city and county and I want to thank all of the commissioners and the staff uh, for their work on this and acknowledge that partnership. Um, resiliency and adaptation are concepts that were important, good concepts before the pandemic and uh, even more so now. Um, I want to acknowledge the good work and the collaboration and leadership that's come from Climate Smart Missoula. Uh, they're a big part of why we have the quality of the product we have before us. The biggest points of this plan is to incorporate to the Our Missoula Growth Policy, uh, Missoula Place Called Home, uh, with ideas involving improved indoor air quality in homes during wildfire smoke events, help workers prevent and limit exposures to the smoke inhalation during smoke events, land use, land and population balance with more open space, um, incentive green buildings during development, water loss and stormwater runoff infrastructures, which is a big deal because the uh, Missoula's water company, when they acquired the water company, 
uh, many of the um, concerns that they had was the major water leak leakage with the uh, pipes that uh, that Carlisle Group said that they were going to fix. Now that the city of Missoula owns the pipes, they are slowly going to replace it, and they have a hundred-year plan to replace these moving forward as well. But with the extension of these new developments that are happening with infrastructure, they're looking to expand water and all that stuff. So. Of course, the list goes on, and you can go to climatereadymissoula.org for more information. Of course, I'm not going to talk too much about climate change issues, uh, but focus on the energy-effective ways Missoula can grow without affecting infrastructure in place and build for a lasting future without other asbestos components called something in the future. So part of this is that they're trying to find the best known science as possible. That was uh, quoted in this meeting as well. They're trying to find the best science that's uh, recently available. Of course, back in the day, they didn't know asbestos was bad for you and they don't know if the, any other stuff that they put in your uh, house are not going to be bad for you 20 years from now. And that's what they're trying to try to do. Keep it somewhat flexible, but, but overall improve the air quality of homes moving forward um, and also being very reactive when it comes to the smoky seasons that uh, plagued the state of Montana. And in particular, uh, for the last couple of years, Missoula's had some smoky seasons as well. So uh, County Commissioner Dave Stormar had this to say in reaction to the city county uh, climate ready Missoula. I think as everyone uh, on this call tonight knows and uh, many in our community know there are two sides to the climate change challenge facing us. One is mitigation and the other is adaptation and resiliency and that is the piece that we're dealing with tonight and I look forward to us city and county rolling up our sleeves and getting work uh, getting to work at the task at hand. The resolution was approved and both the city and the county will move forward on putting this in the climate ready Missoula model of the city county growth policy and like our Missoula many policies can be added or dropped um, in the downtown master plan and city council meetings. This is a very big and extensive plan for uh, being climate ready and just having greener buildings as well. Um, and I have, uh, and that's kind of like what wraps up the city council meeting. It was a fairly short meeting, but that was the biggest points I wanted to talk about in those meetings. You can go to the city's website, again, ci.missoula.mt.us for more information about this. All right, let's talk about some public works. Public works is the biggest thing that was happening um, this week. It was the only thing <laughs> that was happening this week um, on Wednesday, Jeremy Keene Public uh, Missoula Public Works Director spoke to the community and liked, I uh, talked about a couple times, is it's the Mullen uh, Trail, uh, no, it's the Mullen uh, Road uh, project, uh, that new uh, development, that, but one of the biggest things is that they had a build grant, which is a uh, better utilize investments on leverage development, and part of this is that the federal money is being put into uh, infrastructure and growth and last year the city got a 13 million dollar deal from this build federal grant so it's money that was given to the city of missoula and right now they're trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do with the money that they have they wanted 26 million dollars for infrastructure trail connections um roads and stuff like that sidewalks of course um but right now the biggest thing that they're going to be doing is uh mary jane boulevard will connect through England all the way adjacent to Flynn Lane. So there'll basically be another road from Mullen Road to Broadway. George Elmer Drive is going to be another major road that will connect from Mullen to Broadway. It's further up. It's in the 44 Ranch Estate uh, Phase 2 development. Um, and, uh, of course, England Boulevard. It's going to basically connect from Reserve Street all the way to George Elmer Drive uh, through Flynn Lane and Mary Jane Boulevard as well. And this is the main, this is the top priority for a lot of these roads. And part of this is to uh, alleviate a lot of the congestion that's already on England Boulevard and Flynn Lane. Flynn Lane is the road that basically goes right in front of Hellgate Elementary. And many people who live in those neighborhoods that popped up in the last 20 years um, are concerned that it's unsafe for a lot of the kids that walk to school from those developments over to the school as well. So. Flynn Lane is hopefully going to get some alleviation as well as Reserve Street uh, for people who are trying to get uh, from Mullen Road to the airport. All right, so let's see. Um, of course, this was a joint city-county development that will uh, dip into the build grant, uh, which totaled $13 million last year. So far, the items mentioned have the priority, but with the 2020 grant proposing happening, could open the doors for more infrastructure, water sewage, and additional trails. So in the 2020... Uh, 
part is they're going to try to apply for more money to try to fill in all the gaps they want to do. Um, but so far, a lot of times when it comes to development, they don't uh, build uh, with money that they don't want to uh, uh, attain and they don't want to put on any, any impact fees. And that's one of the big things that Jeremy Keene was talking about. He's the Missoula uh, Public Works Director. And one of the biggest things is that if we have impact fees, it'll uh, the cost will associate with the new uh, people who move into those houses. So when you move into the house, your taxes will go up a little bit higher as well. Um, Housing prices, they want to keep it affordable, and um, but also with this build grant, they want to keep the houses uh, with lower taxes as well. So that's the reason why they want to continue with the build grant. All right, so let's see here. Oh, just a little bit of background on build grant. It's the uh, Better Utilized Investment on Leverage Development. And of course, Congress, um, the U.S. Congress and the, and the federal have uh, dedicated $7.9 billion for 11 rounds of national infrastructure investments to fund projects that have significant local or regional impacts. Um, of course, if they don't get the money, they will build. Uh, but the money they want to raise is through impact fees if they don't get the money from the grant. But of course, so far everything is moving fast. They can they they said that they're very confident that they can start seeing some construction happening by August. But for right now, they're working on all the uh, the works and what they're going to do moving forward. They had their initial presentation today, but the city uh, was moving this forward to the city council meeting, which will happen on Monday next week. Um, but some of the issues with funding from impact fees. Oh, wait, I already talked about that. Um, of course, let's see. One of the biggest things of this area as well is this is the Mullen uh, Street Project, um, and you can look this up online as well. They have a whole website that kind of tells you about the phases, and they've uh, spoken to a lot of the people within the community of the Mullen area, of uh, the new Mullen subdivision, um, so to figure out exactly what they wanted, which is why they come up with this England Boulevard, uh, George Elmer connection, um, along with the Mary Jane Boulevard um, br uh, Mullen Road to Broadway connection as well. And they're trying to figure out the priority, um, and that's exactly one of the things that they came to the conclusion of to make this moving forward. So if you are interested in finding out more and watching this meeting yourself, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, it is a wonderful website where you guys can uh, interact with the city of Missoula, get permits for construction projects and stuff like that. Um, it is a great resource for you as well. All right, so. Uh, that kind of ends my city council report, and um, I don't see, do I have anything I want to show you guys quite yet? No, I don't. So, <laughs> I'm just going to wrap up my show now. I thank you guys for really joining me this morning as well. Um, it's going to be very difficult as we're moving forward, uh, especially at MCAT. We're not going to have an available space for any public to come in and record or do anything like that. We've been closed but because of COVID. And another thing is that we've been closed because we're moving out of our location. And uh, there were delays with moving into the new library because of COVID. So there's just a lot of up in the air kind of stuff. But we'll still be available. You can get in contact with MCAT, uh, MCAT at MCAT.org. That's our email. Or you can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. Um, I uh, have another dude I just Zoomed for you. So if you don't know what this is, this is a fun show. These are the highlights from our last episode, and you can find this on YouTube. Uh, and you can like us on our Facebook page, Dude I Just Drew. It's a show where we draw against each other um, in uh, kind of uh, improv drawing kind of fun way and then we make fun of each other and we have a good time doing it so without further ado here is dude i just zoomed um and i'm gonna end my show so for wake up missoula i'm sky Ramp. top of the morning to you laddies uh here <laughs> top of the morning to you laddies we're here with scott ramp graham martin and thomas nielsen we're playing dude i just oh. drew what was that point scott oh i was pointing at tom because on my window it's gonna make sense so we got Thomas Nielsen uh, as our competitor, and uh, who's the host? It's me, I guess. I, due to unforeseen circumstances, will be competing against Tom uh, in this episode of Dude I Just Drew. I am rowing now. Uh, I'm rowing. So uh, I'll reiterate the rules this one time. It's uh, five minutes per drawing. 
Um, I will start out followed by Tom, and then he will draw a new prompt from the hat. Which How many drawings are we doing? We're doing three. We're doing three, three drawings. I'll be picking them out. Um, I will be using a Logitech mouse and itinerary book. Tom will be using an iPad Pro. <laughs> Uh, actually, yeah, I'm using the Huey on Canvas Pro oh, okay. uh, 191. Okay, Helion. This is a character. This is a character design. And it's actually the title of a, a famous jazz song, "Freddy the Freeloader." Freddy the Freeloader. Whoa, whoa, we're using circles. <laughs> That's my one whoa. advantage here. Bro, I have a whole program. Um, Polygons. A whole arsenal of that stuff. What do you guys know about art in general? Not much. Uh, drawing. I can do it. Yeah. That uh, Freddy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Squatters rights. Which out of my many pencils should I use? But you're feeling real jealous right now, huh? I am. Well, we won't know until we uh, actually see you draw. Who's that angry guy by the house? Uh, it's the house owner. It's the homeowner. Uh, it's Freddy. Oh, is it's indeed a freeloader. Narrative here. Wait, how much time do I have left? Uh, you have the time that you're allowed. <laughs> oh, man. Is this, are you done with this? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to figure that out. Just keep adding on until... Where's the paint bucket tool? Is there no paint bucket tool? Come on, oh. every, everybody has a paint bucket tool. Arrow! I don't think we can go with this one. I've picked out a tool. Are you trying to make a YouTube thumbnail, Josh? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Is this a different Freddy? Thumbs up. Uh, <laughs> All right, there you go. Okay. <laughs> it's right, there it is. God, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> we're, this is interesting. Yeah. Freddy's a devil. I'm interested to see where this... Uh... I think that's more of like a baseball cap from the profile view. That's what yeah. I saw. Uh, it looks like two horns. It's Yeah, it's just got a little... It looks more like mouse ears. Uh, what's the difference? Boy, whoa! Oh. <laughs> That's, who's that new one though? Is that the bad guy from the new Scooby Doo movie, Scoob? <laughs> this is less of a funny meme joke and more of a, a stunning social commentary. Is <laughs> is that a Rockefeller? Oh, yes. oh no! It's the That's jail bars. Technique. No, it's a window. That was like it's the evil or it's the evil it's capitalist. It's <laughs> <laughs> Is that what they look like exactly? Get yeah. off. Does he have uh, a campfire inside? <laughs> He's cold. <laughs> I'm impressed that you were that you like managed to throw a dog in there. Yeah. Is that Sir wait hang on? Uh, it just came to me. Is that evil capitalist Sir Topham hat from Thomas the Tank Engine? <laughs> yes. He's a landlord now. <laughs> Spider land. Oh, it's always a spider in it. What? <laughs> it's a it's a suggestion, and you drew it. So, oh boy, spider land. You guys have any fun spider land anecdotes? I wasn't technically a spider, but a ladybug jump scared me. Oh yeah. come on! <laughs> no, I was looking at the wind, and this ladybug came out of nowhere and flew in my face. All right, I guess that's fair. I don't really like what's going on in your picture so far, Tom. It's Spiderland, right? Yeah, but I yep. feel like these people are getting covered by spiders. <laughs> Is that what's happening here? You'll see. Yeah, I guess I will. Is that like the Teletubby sun? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's terrifying. <laughs> that's awful. <laughs> <laughs> the faces are perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. 
<laughs> the guy's like, this kind of rocks. God. I like how the sun, the sun in the background is like, the sun is shining, but the spiders <laughs> are down below. He looks like he's melting. <clears throat> Why'd you have to add the nose? <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, Who is that supposed to be? <laughs> it's not the sun, it's just some guy now. Yeah. <laughs> this is incredibly difficult. Are you trying to make like a planet? That's... The no, that's here. that's that's the giant spider. It, it kind of reminds me like sure. uh, War of the Worlds. <laughs> I I very well could be. The, uh, I'm gonna make him a king, and he will rule over the spider land. That's it. Is that it? Okay. <laughs> King of the spider land. I, I feel like I kind of missed the point with this one, but I don't know if there was a point to begin with. Uh, uh, King uh, of spider land. There we go. Oh, that's him. The sickest mustache ever. <laughs> Only person with a mustache in the chat. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, Pring? <laughs> Pringle. <laughs> oh, Pringle. Oh, Pringle. Oh, it's the Pringle mustache. <laughs> okay. Damn it, I had the same idea. What else does the Pringle man wear? He's the circle with a mustache. That's it. Nine balls. And he's in a cylinder. He's has a huge mustache, that's his body. A f half mustache, half man, all Pringles. These aren't the Pringles you wanted. These are the Pringles you deserve. Because everybody wants the pizza Pringles, but nobody <laughs> wants the... What kind of Pringles are the worst Pringles? In your mind, what is the worst flavor idea for a Pringle? I don't know. They keep uh, coming out with new ones. <laughs> okay. I got the screenshot. Oh, God. Is this, like, a uh, handsome Pringles guy? <laughs> Yes. Old fashioned. Uh... <laughs> is that Eggman? Is, no, that, that, is that Jim Carrey's Eggman? Is that <laughs> that's totally Jim Carrey's Eggman? You, you should you should give him some goggles, Tom. Don't enforce your don't back heteronormative. I, su I I highly suggest that you give him goggles. <laughs> You're backseat drawing again, Josh. Yeah. Don't 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 impose your no, damn that's fair. Keep Eggman <laughs> Eggman normative. God, the Use it me. Keeps don't egg explain how to draw. <laughs> <laughs> I'm defying you, dude. Why are you making him muscular? Because <laughs> it's <that's> important. <laughs> You're giving him like. Wait, wait. He looks. What's the what's okay? The, so what's the um, big guy from Josh Seven made Devil a Sins? sick huh, mustache? Well, oh. Josh made a, I mean Tom made a sick mustache. He has no mouth; it's just a mustache. He, he gets a little bit of lip at the bottom. Oh yeah, that's, that's all he has though. He doesn't have an yeah. actual opening. Yeah. yeah, like he's adding little glints in his oh, eye. Time's up. <laughs> <laughs> can, you send, can you send that one to me? So <laughs> I, I'm gonna get that framed on my wall. Yeah, I'm putting it on now. That's good because last time you just like said Rowan's name and Graham was just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. I still feel cheated. All right. Uh, that this has been dude. I just drew. Uh, thanks to Graham for editing this. Uh, thanks to Scott for being here and judging totally fairly. And uh, thank you, Tom, for um, for being here, for being a guest, and for being better. Yep. Uh, join us uh, next week. We might get for a zombie. I don't know. Next cool. week. Okay. Yeah, we're looking. We're looking towards next week. Yeah, we're looking <laughs> for next week. Do you have any social media, Tom? Yeah, Instagram at Neil Thompson or, you know, S Slim two underscores Jimmy eyes are ones. 
Eyes are ones. Gotcha. Yeah. And if you haven't already seen, uh, Tom Thank has you, appeared man. on our show the last um, two different kind of seasons. So check those mm-hmm. episodes out. You won't recognize him in either episode, but he's there. God, what Pokemon is that? Is that a Mankey? Thanks, thanks, for, thanks, thanks for watching. Josh. Yeah. Thank you. Go check out Tom's Instagram. And uh, until next time. Until next time. Gago Gigagi. Next week.